Hello again, security community. Welcome to another video tutorial to help you make the best of ServiceNow security applications. My name is Eric Ferron. I'm with ServiceNow in Santa Clara, California. Today, we're going to learn about incident enrichment. And for this, my guest is Sarah Arif, Senior Advisory Solution Consultant at ServiceNow. Good afternoon, Sarah, and welcome to the show. Hi, good afternoon, Eric. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Sarah, first, please tell us a little bit about about you, who you are, and then about incident enrichment, things like, you know, what is it? Why is it important? And also, what are we going to learn today? So, Eric, I'm a Senior Advisory Solution Consultant with ServiceNow Security and Risk Product Line Sales Team. And I've been at ServiceNow for about three years now. Today, we'll be focused on incident enrichment. So, this is primarily for customers that are currently licensed or using security incident response and threat intelligence solutions within ServiceNow. And it's really important that we get customers to adopt these solutions and perform automated enrichment of security incidents using threat intelligence. This essentially allows level one incident handlers and potentially some level two folks to speed up incident response by automatically performing threat lookups and even things like get running processes or get network statistics on a particular endpoint. Excellent. So this is really about getting better with, with what the people or people already have. That's great. Thank you for this. So here is our, our agenda for the next 15 minutes. We're going to go through quickly through a set of refreshers to get everyone on the same page, then some background information on incident enrichment, and then of course, an in-product demo. So let's get started with the, with the refreshers. Uh, by now, you will all be very familiar with this slide that represents the various steps of maturity you can achieve using the ServiceNow Security Incident Response application. And today's episode will help you find your way to maturity level two on the automated investigation. Similarly, uh, you will remember this slide that gives you an overall view of how all of these video tutorials link with one another and your growing experience. And we define three flows, the one at the center, that contains all the tutorials you need to handle all the processes and management change as you roll out the application. On the right, the extra resources that will help you along the way. And on the left, the technical stream with in-product demos such as uh, what Sarah is gonna do for us, for us today. So with no further ado, uh, Sarah, the floor is now yours. Please take it away. Thanks, Eric. So we'll be focused on incident enrichment today. So today for most customers, they have manual swivel chair enrichment processes where maybe your level one or level two incident handlers within your security operations center are actually swivel chairing and logging into external systems. So an example of that is potentially performing an observable lookup within recorded future or an IOC lookup in virus total or CrowdStrike. They're also running some commands like get running processes and get running services manually as well. This could be done through terminal and command line or by logging into a system such as Carbon Black or even Tanium. But tomorrow using ServiceNow, we hope to really get customers to integrate these third party solutions into ServiceNow's security incident response and threat intelligence solutions using our out of the box connectors. This is really key to your success as a customer to use our out of the box connectors where we've implemented best practices for, for these integrations. We also allow you to automatically enrich the security incident with this third party information upon creation of a new security incident. But we also allow that level one or level two incident handler to perform the threat lookup or the observable lookup directly through ServiceNow. So today I'll be walking you through incident enrichment using ServiceNow. This is for security incident response and threat intelligence customers. We're gonna be walking through the ability to use integration configurations to set up an integration using our out of the box connector. We'll also show you how we can automatically perform incident enrichment upon security incident creation. And we'll also walk through a use case where an incident handler performs a threat lookup manually. So let's get started. We're going to walk through an example of how you can enrich a security incident with observable information, either through a threat lookup or through observable enrichment. To get started, the first thing that we will want to do is navigate to our integration configurations capability. 
as part of security incident response. What this allows us to do is to actually see a catalog of integrations that we're able to set up. This is everything from SIMs to firewalls, all the way to what we care about today, which is an integration to a threat intelligence provider. In this case, I've set up an integration to VirusTotal, where I've just inputted an API key, and the name can just be a unique value for this integration. So it could be, for example, Virus Total July 2019. I've also set up an integration to Recorded Future as well. And we also have an integration out to Shodan, and Shodan actually allows us to perform some enrichment on the observable. Now we can actually go to a particular security incident to view how this observable enrichment works. And so we'll navigate to our security incident explorer dashboard, and I'm just going to go directly to the security incidents. When it comes to security incident response, these security incidents will automatically be created anytime an event is passed into ServiceNow or an email is sent to the organization from your MSSP. You can also manually create security incidents as well. But in this case, we're going to take a look at one that was automatically created and it was actually sent to us by Splunk. So our source comes from a SIM. And when Splunk sends us this particular security incident, we can actually parse out some metadata from the events that were sent over. So an example of that metadata is the actual host, so the configuration item. We also have information around the category of security incident. And we've actually parsed out the observables as well that were sent to us in the underlying events. So if you scroll down in the security incident record, you're actually able to see that there's a related list on show IOC. And that allows us to look at the observables that were automatically parsed out into our observables database. Now, this observables capability does require that you are licensed for the threat intelligence module within ServiceNow. And if you're integrating to a threat intelligence solution, such as Recorded Future or VirusTotal, you must also be licensed for those solutions as well. So in this case, we'll take a look at an observable that was automatically parsed out. And in this case, it's an IP address. The IP address was parsed out, and we actually have a finding that's been generated here. So this particular IP is known and it's malicious. And the way that we have that finding is because we performed an automated threat lookup. And that threat lookup allowed us to go to VirusTotal and Recorded Future. VirusTotal says that this was actually unknown. Recorded Future says it's unusual. And if it's unusual, it's actually been cited in three different sources. And because Recorded Future knows that it's malicious, ServiceNow has automatically set this finding to malicious. So this is all automatically run, and under the hood it's done through workflow. If you actually wanted to see which workflows are triggered upon creation of the security incident, you can take a look at this activity trail where you're able to see that there were particular workflows that were triggered. In this case, for example, we had a threat lookup that was executed and it was completed. We also enriched this observable with Shodan information. If you're a level one or level two incident handler or anyone within the Security Operations Center, you also have the capability to create a new observable manually. So this might be the case if you're correlating additional information sent over, um, or not sent over rather, by Splunk. And so here I can input a value that maybe I, I observed in my SIM environment. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save this particular observable. And now when we scroll down, there is a run threat lookup capability. And so now I can actually manually run a threat lookup rather than having to swivel chair into a third party solution to do this. And in a couple seconds, we'll actually see a threat lookup result populate here that will allow us to understand whether or not this particular observable is known and if it's malicious. So here you'll see the threat lookup result has populated, and according to Recorded Future, this was actually unusual. VirusTotal did not see this particular observable. So that gives us some additional enrichment information. Here we can also run an observable enrichment against Shodan or Whois. 
ServiceNow does periodically release new integrations, and you can always check out the ServiceNow App Store for some additional information. But through this enrichment capability, we're able to speed up response times and allow our security incident handler to view a security incident as well as all the associated observables, threat lookups, and any sort of enrichment that may be offered by, by for example, Shodan. Thank you very much for this, uh, Sarah. So what would be your recommendation to our audience that they should be doing right now after viewing this tutorial? So to get started, let's definitely turn on our threat intelligence plugin if you haven't done that already. You can follow the demonstration that was just provided to use the integration configurations catalog, which will actually allow you to install and connect to your licensed third-party threat lookup tools. Another great resource for this is the ServiceNow doc site, which is publicly available through a Google search. It'll actually walk you through instructions for every one of our connectors. And then from there, you can perform a threat lookup manually from an observable record, and that's done using the threat intelligence module. And observe the automated enrichment on a newly created security incident record. So if your security incident response solution is integrated to a SIM or to an EDR solution, or if you're even receiving automated security incidents from your MSSP, observe how many of those newly created security incidents have IOCs parsed out and how we've actually enriched the observable lookups directly within the security incident. All right. Well, um, again, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you very much to the audience for listening. And um, a few quick reminders before we close. Uh, the PDF version of the slides will be available in the video description on YouTube and, of course, in the community forum. Please do post your questions in the forum. Uh, Sarah and all the specialists will be available to provide you with answers. And finally, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and the thread in the forum to stay up to date and not miss the next episode of the series. Thank you again, Sarah. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, goodbye.